Thank you for inviting me. It's uh, great to be on. Uh, I'm Odin Wangen and I'm a, a web developer and uh, IT consultant in Hermark IKT. I've been working in IT in municipalities since uh, 2002 and believe municipalities have one of the most complex and diverse IT systems. On the next slide, we am shortly going to uh, give an introduction to our company. Uh, we were established in 2005. We have uh, we are an, an intermunicipal company owned by seven municipalities located in the southeast of Norway. Uh, our customers have uh, uh, IT infrastructure spread across uh, about 280 physical locations and buildings. So um, that makes it uh, very complex. We have uh, one data center and a backup data center. And most of our systems are centralized. So we have almost no servers outside our data centers. Uh, the combined population of the area is about uh, 100,000 people of which 22,000 people use our solutions. Uh, elementary school pupils uh, account for a large number of that, uh, a large part of that number, because uh, we also provide equipment for uh, pupils. We have two office locations with a uh, little over 40 employees. And on the next slide, you can see the area of jurisdiction, so to speak. It's about a two hour drive and uh, it's quite rural uh, with only two cities. On an international site, uh, scale, you wouldn't even consider them cities, but probably towns. Uh, and now to the more interesting parts, um, why we choose uh, CMD build. Uh, in 2016, we used Excel spreadsheets to keep track of our IP addresses, subnets, and uh, host names. And that's really tedious because multiple people cannot edit this uh, document at the same time. So you end up with a uh, lot of copies and nobody knows which one is, uh, is the correct one. Uh, you have no history when changes are made. You have no record of who or who uh, changed what. And you cannot make any sense of re relationships between assets. So uh, there's a lot of room for errors uh, because there's no forced formatting or validation of the data. So we made an entity relationship diagram of what we wanted to accomplish and searched for application to handle that. They were all bad. <laughs> even uh, either bloated, expensive, or didn't have the functionality that we wanted. Uh, so we decided to create our own web application. We started looking for code frameworks to build upon when uh, we stumbled across CMD build. So CMD build had everything we were looking for. Uh, without requiring any coding. It's, it's basically a codeless modeling framework as far as we see it. So it has um, built-in support for many-to-many -many relationships. So you don't need to uh, do any 
database normalization, which is quite hard when the model gets big. Uh, we could create our own model. So that was very important for us. So uh, it was it was also expandable and scalable. And it was, of course, free and open source. And that's a uh, big plus too. Initially, we only had IP addresses, subnets, and host in the CMD build, but we have expanded it since. And we also have uh, set up uh, Active Directory integration, which is quite easy to do. So on the next slide, we have uh, our current uh, model. I'm sure it's not perfect, but it suits our needs very well. Uh, hosts here are a uh, super class, so the model is a little simplified, but you get the sense of the model anyway. We also have uh, operating systems, databases, what we call systems, which is uh, software uh, services, really. Uh, customers and persons responsible ball and uh, the company or firm that provides the third party software. And we have internet links and subnets and the DHCP range, ranges with uh, options. So that's how we keep track of uh, our assets. The next one we have uh, to get to the uh, scale of the size of uh, how, how much data we have in the CD build. So this is of course created with Jasper Soft Studio and uh, this report was uh, is available in uh, as a report in CD build. You can see we have almost uh, 10,000 IP addresses uh, registered and a lot of DHCP scopes and uh, subnets. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you can see uh, our DHCP configuration. Uh, we don't really have much interesting things in uh, in CMD build, only we focus on the data. So we don't have any workflows, any custom pages. We have very few views and integrations, really. The only special thing we have is this uh, Python script, which uh, gets uh, the HCP configuration from our, uh, from CMD build and creates a configuration for our DHCP servers. So that part is, is uh, automatic. So when we create uh, a DHCP configuration in CMD build, we can run a script and our DHCP servers are completely configured. On the next slide, I've, I'll try to take some considerations uh, about uh, what you should think about when you set up CMD build from scratch. Uh, you should start uh, small, but plan for expansion. So if you build a model, try to build it a uh, little build, uh, bigger and think of the future, how we will expand it. Uh, uh, but only create classes and relations that you know you will use. It's very easy to create a big model, but you should try to hold yourself back a little, I think, to not make uh, mistakes. 
consider carefully if you want to use uh, uh, lookup fields, especially, or if you want to create another class. We made that mistake uh, early and had to mig migrate from a lookup uh, uh, field to a class to make it more scalable. And that is doable, but uh, you have to know how the database works. Uh, and on that uh, part, you should learn how the database or the IP uh, API works, or at least one of them. Uh, it's always risky to make uh, changes directly in the database if you don't know how uh, the database works. So uh, be careful and learn how it, how it works first. At least pay attention to how the map tables and status attributes are used and make sure you do it correctly. Uh, there are uh, triggers and procedures in the database to prevent corruption, but uh, you can still mess up if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, you can create your own triggers and functions also. So we have done that. I would probably recommend training or asking Tecnoteca for uh, assistance if you are not comfortable doing this yourself. Uh, there's a lot of things you can improve once the model is in place. Uh, you can create reports in JasperSoft Studio, like I uh, mentioned. You can create views and uh, search filters and validation rules and custom pages, and dashboards and menus and context menus. Uh, you have to create import and export templates if you want to export or import uh, data. And uh, that could take some time to, to work out. So uh, that's a uh, uh, against uh, doing this from scratch when you have uh, uh, products like uh, ready to use. So you should probably consider making the application more usable before you expand the model. On the next slide, I have an example of a, a functional function on the trigger we use to copy the unique attributes automatically to the required attrib attributes code and description. So we have hidden uh, code and description fields in the application to simplify it and make the application a little more user-friendly for some of our uh, non-technical stuff. In the future, we want to uh, use uh, we use uh, Nagios Core to monitor our hosts and services. So that's a monitoring uh, application. But it's quite hard to handle when it gets, uh, it gets this uh, big in the configuration, it gets a little complex. So we want to integrate CMD build with uh, Nagios Core where we have classes and relations in uh, CMD build to, for all the Nagios uh, configuration. We might also convert our scripts to use the CMD build API instead of using SQL queries, since that seems more safe, especially if, you, if there are changes to the model. Uh, and we recently found out that there's a Docker image for Cindy build. So I've tested that a little and 
uh, we'll use that to test features and uh, uh, test our models from now on. And the next slide. Uh, this is how the Nagios core integration model should probably look like. Like this is just a preliminary model, so we're going to test it first and see how it works. But uh, it pretty much uh, reflects the relationships between uh, different object uh, uh, definitions in Nagios. So we will, of course, use uh, uh, Docker, the Docker uh, CMD build image to test this model. And this is just uh, part of the model. So uh, it will probably be a little bigger, I think. Uh, that's about all I have. So thank you again for um, having me on. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.